JavaScript is a functional programming language and it allows us to define functions in many different ways. Let's have an example to understand the same. So first I'm going to create a new file ex05.js and the first and simplest way of declaring a function is with a function keyword like this function hello and now I can return here a string something like hello world and then you can call this function like this let s1 equals to hello now return value of hello is assigned to s1 and I'm going to print console log s1 save this go back to the command prompt node ex05 and we get this hello world so one thing to observe here is that the function definition here can be kept even after these statements also. Now this is a little peculiar because JavaScript loads all the function definitions even before the execution of this file. So technically speaking there are only two lines of executions here. There's the first line of execution, there's the second line of execution. So even before the execution is done, this has already been loaded into the VM. So this still works. So if I go back and check the same, you can see it says hello world. Let me bring it back to the beginning. Another way of defining a function is by using a variable and assigning an anonymous function. So I can do the same thing by typing let greet equals to a function without a name. So this is called anonymous function for a very simple reason because there is no name to this function. I'll say return hello world. And then I can again say let s2 equals to greet. So this time greet is a variable representing a function and I'm calling that function and then assigning the return value to s2. Let's print that by typing console log s2. We'll see the output twice. But this time I cannot change the sequence. For example, if I cut this one and paste it afterwards, now the execution begins from here. So there's the first line of execution, second line of execution, third line of execution but at this time there is no function loaded in the VM called greet. So there are two functions in the VM. Number one is this. Number two is this but it's an anonymous function. So the greet function doesn't exist at line number 10. If you run this it's going to cause a problem. So I'm going to clear the screen, call this node ex05 and line number 10 has an error greet is not defined. So you're declaring a variable only at line number 14 so it cannot be accessed at line number 10. So we have to bring it back and paste it. There are many places where you may have to pass functions as arguments to another functions. Consider another function called welcome. So I'll say function welcome, which prints a welcome message. So I can say here, welcome to ReactJS training. Save this. Imagine I want to print this repeatedly every one second. So what I can do is I can use a built-in function called set interval and that takes two arguments. The first one happens to be the name of the function and second one is the duration. So I'll give it as 1000 indicating one second or 1000 milliseconds. Save this. If I go back to the command prompt and type node ex05, you will see that the welcome message now prints every one second. So the only way I can stop at this time is control C and that stops the execution. So what has happened here is that I supplied a function to set interval. I did not call the welcome. The welcome was called by set interval. So we call this as a callback function because I call set interval, set interval calls back the welcome function. In many cases, the purpose of this welcome function is only to be supplied as a callback and later we will never call this. So instead of unnecessarily polluting the VM with this function, we can supply the actual function here itself. For example, I can cut this from here and instead of welcome over here, I can paste the entire function there itself. And also I don't need this name here, I can remove this. In other words, we supply an anonymous function over here and then an interval. So the first argument is a function that gets executed by set interval for every one second. Save this and rerun the program once more. You will see that the execution works just like the previous one. Let me press Ctrl+C c and exit this. Now ES6 introduced a simpler way of doing this which is called arrow functions. In order to use the arrow function just get rid of this function keyword 
and use an arrow over here like this. Save this, run this, and we should be able to get the same output once more. Press Ctrl C to come out. Now, when you use arrow functions, this acts as a placeholder for parameters. Since we don't have any parameters, we can just leave an empty bracket here. And this is the body of the function. And if the body of the function is just a one expression or one statement, especially if that happens to be a return statement, you just have to give this without even giving the bracket or semicolon. So I can remove that and place it like this. So now you see this is a function, but in a very simple expression style. Save this, run this once more, and we should get the output just like the same. There are many practical applications of this arrow functions. We'll take another example file to understand the same. So let me close this and create a new file called ex06.js. This time I want to create an array of some names. For example, let names equals to an array of few names. Let's say we know Shyam, John and Jane. Now this being an array, it has many functions. For example, there is a function called map where for every element, I can convert that into a different element. For example, if I want only the first letters of each of these particular values, I can just type here names.map, which takes a function as a parameter. So the function is supposed to be like this, which receives the value for example, I call it as val or I can say name and then an index and then given this name and index, what do you want to return from there? So I can say here return name dot char at zero. Notice I have not used the index here, but it's given to me. So map is a function that I call by supplying my own function. My function is called by map, hence it's called callback. Map gives me one name at a time and I return instead of that name, I'm returning the first character of that name. Each time the return value is collected by the map and eventually it will return an entire array itself. So I can say here, let cars equals to and then print the same thing. So I'm going to type here console.log names and console.log cars. Save this, go back run this sixth one this time and you'll see that the first array is my input which is the names second one is the first character of each one of them so now that we have written a map function in this style so we can simplify the same in another way so i'm going to copy this and paste over here and change this function to an arrow function so to do so i'll remove this function keyword i keep these two parameters and i'll put an arrow here and since there is a return statement here I can simply copy what is the return value and then substitute for the entire function body like this so now we see it looks pretty simple if you observe I have never used this index so I don't need that and since there is only one parameter I don't need the bracket either so I'm going to remove the bracket and now it looks so simple that names.map given a name I'm returning the first character of the name. So this can be read so simple. Let's print this by using console log cats once more and save this, go back to the command prompt, run this once more. You can see that we have the exact same output whether I used a complex lengthy function or a simple arrow function expression. Similarly, if I want to find out the index of a string in the array, I can use something called names.findindex which takes a function as an argument. Once again, the function will be given the value and the index, and I have to return true or false based on my condition. So if I'm searching for a value, like for example, imagine I'm searching for John, I have to check if John is equals to this value, then I have to say true. If it is not, as I should say return false. And this function will be repeatedly called for every value within the array. Whenever a true value is returned by me, it will stop and finds the index of that and gives that value. So all I have to do is to say return value triple equals to 
John, for example. Since this is going to give me an index, let me declare a variable called index and I can type here console.log John is found at index and then followed by the index. So obviously its index is two. So I'm going to save this, run this once more. It says John is found at index two. And if I want to search for, say for example, Johnny instead of John, so I'm going to change this both Johns to Johnny, which is not found. So if I save this and run this, you will see that it says index is minus one because Johnny is not found in my array. Now in order to simplify or convert this into an arrow function, I will remove this entire stuff and simply type value arrow. And then I say value equals to equals to Johnny or John. And I don't need this bracket anymore. So now my find index looks very, very simple. So given a value, I'm checking if that value happens to be John. Whenever it is matched, it's going to give me the index. In, in case if none of the values match John, then I'm going to get minus one. Change this also to John. Save this. Go back to the command prompt. Run this once more. And now we can see John is found at index two.